Philippine equestrian Tony Leviste broke her collarbone a few weeks before the 2000 Summer Olympics in Sydney, but it did not stop her from playing in the Olympics. This is just one of the many experiences that made her the champion that she is. If we encourage the youth to get involved in sports, it will build their character. And when we have stronger citizens, we will have a stronger nation. I'm Tony Leviste, Philippine equestrian, and I competed at the Sydney 2000 Olympic Games. Well, since I was 10 years old, when I first competed in my first equestrian competition in Clark Air Base, I've always dreamt to become an Olympian. And like you said, it's every athlete's dream. When I finally uh, succeeded in representing the country at the 2000 Sydney Olympics after having qualified the year before in a world qualifying event, it was one of the happiest moments of my life. I never expected to qualify because unlike um, other championships like let's say the Southeast Asian Games or the Asian Games which are, which are regional championships, in the Olympic Games for any sport you have to qualify in a world qualifying event. Defeat the other contenders in, in your region. As far as equestrian was concerned, there were only two individuals that they would select out of the whole region, meaning the Asia-Pacific region. So out of all of those countries, they only picked two individuals. I didn't um, expect that it would be my time, but you'll only know that you can do it if you try. So I did prepare for it, no matter how brief it was. And um, the horse I was competing with there, her name was Gandhi. And um, in this sport, unique to compare to all the other sports, uh, it's always a partnership between you and your horse. So it's a 50-50 partnership. And um, she did her best that day, and it was my lucky day. <laughs> the crazy thing that happened just before the Olympics was I competed in England in a prestigious competition called the Hickstead Derby, where um, I was set to do my last rounds of competition before flying to Australia with my horse and I broke my collarbone. I had a really bad fall during the event, not on Gandhi but on another horse. The first question I asked was, am I going to make it to the Olympics? <laughs> and he said, well, I'm not sure how possible that is because it takes eight weeks to heal a collarbone. And so I said to the doctor, well, I'm going to to get there even if it kills me <laughs> because I wasn't sure when I was going to have another chance to represent the country at an Olympic Games and I really put it in my head that with a lot of willpower I'm just going to do it. I had exactly six weeks to from that day when I broke my collarbone to the first day of competition in Sydney. I flew to Australia with my horse with a sling in my arm because my collarbone was still broken. But when I was on the horse, and the first time I got on the horse after the accident was the day of the friendly competition, which is like the training competition two days before the actual first day of events. When I was on the horse, I couldn't feel any pain, which proves to me more than ever that when you really want to do something, your mind will make it happen. In our event, you have to walk the course in order to study the lines and where you have to go and measure the distances in order to, to adjust the strides of your horse. If you allow yourself one ounce of fear to settle in your mind as you're walking the course, you will not enter the field. You, know, you will not enter the arena. So talagang, I really just braced myself and thought very, uh, very carefully on how I was going to plan my course, how I was going to ride my horse, and um, didn't let any fear settle in my heart. And I just trusted God that I was there for a reason and with all my heart wanted to represent my flag and country. I can still, still feel every emotion in my heart when I look back and think about it because I was with 10,000 of the most um, disciplined, determined and dedicated individuals in the world and who were in the top of their sport, of their game. And it was such an honor to be there walking with them and 
more so to walk behind our flag. I was so proud. I remembered when I was competing in Doha, Qatar, at the Asian Games in 2006, they were inviting me to become a Qatari to, because they wanted to um, promote equestrian sport for the Qatari women. Qatar is one of the most funded equestrian sports in the world today. I thought about it very carefully. It was, of course, very tempting because then I don't have to worry about funding or sponsorships, which athletes, especially in this sport, often have to think about in order to continue. But I realized that I ride with passion because I ride for my flag and country, and I couldn't do the same if I was representing another country. There would be no comparable feeling and pride in winning something for your country. I, I hope, of course, that the, the country, the government, could um, focus a little bit more on the sports program because I believe, of course, our country has so many other things to worry about, more pressing issues. I mean, the poverty in the country, of course, we know that, that is more, th those are more pressing issues. We have to consider what our priorities are. Not to say that sports should not be one of the priorities because I've always believed that sports is a great vehicle to create strong citizens because it builds character. It promotes discipline, dedication, and determination, three traits that are important not only in the sporting arena, but in every aspect of a person's life.